this whole thing right here, you control 100% of the flow of money. You controlled where it went. You were in full control of that money. It is private. It is guaranteed. It is tax-free. It has a death benefit to protect my family. I can take that money out because it's liquid and use it. But when I take it, I'm taking a loan against the death benefit. So therefore, my money never even leaves the account. That's called uninterrupted compound interest. But then I send it out here to work for me. And it now is earning me 1062 and a net spread. If I do the spread over here, the 5% loan interest rate minus the 15, I make a net spread of 10. And I put that 1062 over here, which now the second is deposited back in the policy, I could reuse it again and again and again. And the entire time I controlled the money and I earned a spread. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us for this preview event where we kind of get you prepped and ready for what's coming. And what's coming? Well, I don't know. Probably a bad recession, probably a big market drop, lots of opportunities or lots of tears for those that are not ready. So that's what we're going to start to get you ready for tonight. We're going to tackle that with a couple very distinctive strategies, and they're all going to lead into what we're doing this weekend, which is a three-day virtual training We've gotten to be known quite well for our virtual trainings. Uh, we're pretty darn good at them, and I don't mean to, to boast, but uh, we pack a lot of knowledge into three days, and then we edit it all down, and uh, we send it off to all the attendees. So this is a preview event for that. So Stephen and I are going to give you guys lots of value today, and we're really going to dive uh, as deep as we can in the time we have. But let's hit some housekeeping for today's preview. First and foremost, if you want popcorn, go to your, your little pantry and uh, the, the microwave popcorn is pretty good and grab your favorite beverage. If you need to use the restroom, yep, it's right down the hall, the door on the left or right, depending on what house you're in. And all we ask is that you put your questions and all of your questions in the Q&A and we will answer all of them, even if it requires us to stay after and make sure that they get answered. Uh, make sure those of you that are joining on, we got about 200 to 250 people gonna be joining us. So lots of extra people are gonna be coming in. We are recording this. So the recordings of this will be put up on the YouTube channel in about a, probably a little less than a week or a week's time, give or take. But uh, you'll be able to get these recordings, go back and watch any part of it. But with that being said, folks, questions all go in the Q&A. Right down below, just look at it, it says Q&A. And if you just kind of want to chat back and forth, we'll be you know hitting as many of them as we can. Uh, you can put it in the chat, but if you really got a good one, put it in the Q and A. Stephen, where should we take this thing off to? Yeah, what's up, guys? So well, let's see who's here right now. So if you've been on one of our trainings before, maybe you're on this past Wednesday uh, when when I did Wealth Webinar Wednesday, or you've been on one of our previous ones. Uh, just write campfire. If you're brand new, if this is your first time coming to a money school webinar or training, put new. I'm just trying to see who's new and who's been around the campfire. All right, Chris, we got a lot of new people on here. I see that. Holy smokes. Well, we got a lot of people around the campfire too. That's right. Okay. All right. Well, with that said, man, we're probably going to have to get into some um, some of the foundational stuff that makes money school so successful and all of our clients coming back time and time again. So maybe we'll just kind of start with, um, you know, what this is all about, you know, layout, kind of how you got here, Chris. Yeah. So, I mean, let me just kind of give you guys a quick story. I was a financial advisor for 16 years. Prior to doing that, I was a actually prior and during I was a professional snowboarder. So really as a snowboarder, I didn't know a darn thing about money. I know I needed money to get to the hill. I needed insurance on my car. And I usually needed a little bit of beer money because usually after we got done riding, we would stop and have a, a beverage. But uh, that was about the extent of my life. And then I opened a skateboard snowboard shop, which complicated that a little bit because now I had a business to run. And then when that business took a big downturn, okay, about a 30% drop, that would have been in the early 2000s during what, what for me was the very first recession that I ever went through. And, and many of you would know that recession in the early 2000s as the dot-com crash. Now, I want to just preface real quick and transition. So remember, that was early 2000s, dot-com crash. I'm a pro snowboarder. I'm running skateboard snowboard shops. And then boom, one recession and everything comes halt, halting down and I needed to get a job. So fast forward to today. We're in 2023, it's weird to say 2023, but we're in 2023 and 
Whether you know it or not, we are in a technical recession right now. By technical definitions, ignore what they say in Wall Street or in uh, DC. They, they're just talking heads up there. We are in a recession. And the only reason it does not feel like a recession right now is because of unemployment numbers being so low. So when you look at the employment numbers, and if you follow the news, those employment numbers are holding really good. Uh, there's tons of people employed. And if somebody gets let go, they get picked up by another company. But what you're seeing are major cracks at the top. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't take much to pull up any news channel or watch the news or any social media channel and see that all the big companies from Google to Amazon to Microsoft to Netflix to, holy cow, I could go right down the line, Ford, they're laying people off. But that, those layoffs have not hit Main Street yet. And Main Street, what I mean is by that is the local small businesses like my business was. You see, when I had Fat Man Board Shops, I didn't even know we were in a recession until it was too late because that's what happens. Main Street fills it last. What's feeling it right now is if you know any truckers, okay, you know anyone in the trucking industry, first off, you should shake their hand, okay, and say thank you because they keep this country moving, but they're feeling it which is a leading indicator stating a couple things that we know to be true and that you soon will know to be true is we are headed for a very severe recession here soon. Now, I know when you're out there, it just doesn't feel like you're like, yeah, eggs are expensive and things cost more. That's called inflation. But what you're not realizing is what a recession really is going to be. And it means that the stock market's going to continue to trend downward and probably much faster than it has been. You see, it's been going pretty sideways, down a little bit, but more sideways. See, we're, we're entering what will be the third leg of the market crash, and that's where it's going to go all the way down. So now let me transition back to what happened in those early 2000s when I realized we were in a recession. I realized that my business had fallen over 30%. The sales went down 30%, almost overnight it felt, and I needed to get a job. So when I went out looking for a job, I thought, all right, I'll deliver pizzas. And that seemed like a logical thing to do for a, a snowboarder who just needs to make a little extra cash, but Little Caesars wasn't hiring. So I put my resume out. My resume was, was a one-page resume. Didn't have much on there. A little bit of community college. I own some skateboard snowboard shops. I'm a pro snowboarder. And by the way, here on the back are some references, about a quarter of the back of the page. And I sent it out, and the only people that got a hold of me were Wall Street firms. I got several Wall Street firms that wanted to interview me, which is weird because I've never put a suit on in my life. But I went out, and long story short, I ended up you know, landing in Wall Street, spent 16 years there, and was in Wall Street at the, at the I entered Wall Street right when the dot-com crash was kind of back on the move up, okay? So we had already bottomed out, and we were back on the move up. And then I went through another recession as an advisor, 2008. Now, you would think that after I went through one, I would have been prepared in 2008, but here's the problem. And I want you to pay close attention to this because this is happening right now. I was an advisor, a high-level advisor, and so was Stephen. We got our advice and we got all of our knowledge from these consultants up at the big firm. And they would fly in and they would pit, you know, tell us all the things we need to do. And when we asked about the recession, oh, the, it'll be fine. You know, just tell your clients they're in it for the long haul. This is a long game. It's just a paper loss. Does any of that sound familiar? Have any of you sat down with your advisors and heard some of these things as of recently? Oh, it's just a paper loss. Oh, it's going to come back. Sure, it always does. Doesn't feel good when you're in the midst of it, right? So even though I was hearing this from the consultants and I was telling my clients it's going to be fine, the next day, it wasn't fine. The market was down another 800 points. And the next day, another 500. And the next day, another 300. Folks, that was then. Okay, I talked about the early 2000s recession. I talked about the Great Recession in 2008. Now, if you just fast forward to where we're at now, here we are. We are now. Okay, but this means it's time where you need to get prepared. You see, I wasn't prepared in the early 2000s, which meant I had to go get a, another job, a second job, because I couldn't make it. See, you all need to get prepared. And what prepared means is not getting a second job. Prepared means get ready for the biggest opportunity of your life. And that's exactly what this weekend's three-day event's about. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And how do you get ready? It's positioning. It's mentally getting ready, and it's making sure that you foresee what is about to happen. Not that I want you to live in the future, but I want you to foresee what's about to happen so that you now, today, can get your ducks in order so that you can take advantage of those opportunities. Now, let's transition back to 2008. 
I want to ask all of you a very serious question and put it in the chat here. Would you like to go back to 2009, knowing what you know now, having the money you have now in the bank? How many of you would like to go back to 2009 to buy some of that real estate? Because I asked how many real estate investors we had, right? And a bunch of people said yes. And look at this. They're all chiming in, right? Everybody's saying, yes, of course, for sure. Hell yeah. Well, wouldn't we all like to go back in time and do that? Because it's easy to look back. It's easy to look in hindsight where we have been because you can see the charts. You can see, oh my God, real estate fell 30 or 40%. I could have bought things, pennies on the dollar. Oh my God, if I bought Amazon then or Microsoft or Apple or any stock, I'd, I'd be a millionaire now. The main problem with looking back is all you can say is I should have, I could have, I would have. Just like all of you said, I should have, I could have, I would have. So forget about the I should have, I could have, I would have. Because now here where we are right now, we can't predict the future. So I can't tell you when this recession is really going to sink in. I can get pretty close. I think by the end of this year, you're going to certainly know you're in a recession. And by next year, we're going to be feeling some major after effects. So if we want to repeat what you just all said you wished you could have done, which is go back to 2009, all we need to do is make sure we're ready for 2009 over again. Now, some of you would disagree with me and say, oh, real estate's not going to fall that much this time. There's too much demand. Yeah, well, did you see what the headline said all week about the Fed? The Fed isn't getting the results they want. Sure, today they said inflation is slowing, but it's not slowing at a fast enough pace for them, which means they're going to continue to jack up the interest rates, which means mortgages are going to continue to cost more. Car loans are going to continue to cost more. Credit cards are probably going to be the average of about 24 to 29%. Everything that you would buy using traditional banks' money is going to cost you more. So now you, you, you compare the two. You look at the cost of money, and you look at the demand for housing. And then let's just throw in there the median, the median home price, which is very high right now. And the three high, I think high 300s, if I'm not mistaken, maybe mid 300s. The people that want the houses, the demand, the millennials can't afford the houses at today's price. And, and, and I, actually, they can. They can afford the $350,000 house. But let me just ask all of you this. Yeah, Zoom is doing layoffs. Come on, Zoom is laying people off? Let me ask all of you this right now. In your area, I don't know where you guys are all at. I'm in Buffalo, New York. Not a lot of people want to live in Buffalo. It's miserable. It was pouring rain today, and it's about 30 degrees. You, you figure out whether you want to live in that, okay? So there's not a lot of people that want to live here. But I'll tell you right now, if a house is on the market for three hundred dollars or $350,000, it's gone. But then there's a lot of inventory at five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand. dollars $800,000. That has slowed down significantly. How many of you in your area, so Nevada, San Diego, New Jersey, is there any houses for sale for $350,000? Be honest, is there? Tennessee, Houston? Nope. Nope. I don't know where Matthew's from, but he said, no. Nope. Okay, Michigan, maybe. Michigan, maybe. California, no way. Heck no from Dexter. He's in California. Toronto? Pfft. Shoot. What are you going to get? In, you're going to get a shed for $300,000 in Toronto, right? Michigan and, and Buffalo are kind of the same. Like, you know, that's not a lot of people that want to live in these areas. So our pricing is a little bit lower. But I want you to think about that. If that's the median home price, and that's what the new home buyers can afford, that's going to go away as rates keep going up. So the demand won't matter because the demand demands a house that they can't afford at the higher interest rates. So what has to happen, folks? Price of real estate must come down. It is simple economics. It is simple mathematics. If there's a lot of inventory, and right now there's not a lot of inventory, but there's soon going to be. It's building up. It's been slowing down a lot. Okay, so as inventory builds, people either have to make a decision. I'm not going to sell my house or I'm going to reduce the price. Let me ask anyone on here, any realtors, anybody, where are the prices in real estate going right now for, prop, for inventory on the market? I bet you anybody, yeah, that's right, down, right there, down 20%, says Matthew. Down a little, okay, certain areas are only down a little, Buffalo's only down a little. So all I'm trying to do is paint to you a picture. When I took you back in time to 2008, 2009, you all wanted to go back there and buy real estate. But right now, we're looking at real estate saying, ah, there are deals out there, but it's still pretty expensive. Well, just wait. Give it a little bit, right? Give it a couple months. Give it a year. The price of real estate will come down. The price of real estate will be a good buying opportunity. And here's the cool thing. 
And this, this will be, I'm not going to say unprecedented, but this will be very evident. What you will want in this next phase of this recession are rentals, but not the high-end rentals. You're going to want the Bs and the Cs. You're going to want a lot of those. I don't care if they're single family houses. And do you know why? A lot of people are going to look to downsize. A lot of people are going to look to move into a house that's affordable. They're going to look to move out of an expensive house, or maybe they're going to lose houses. Anyone know, Stephen, you, you knew this. Um, I know foreclosure rates have gone up significantly, but the media doesn't want you to know that. Does anyone have their finger on the pulse of uh, foreclosure rates and how much they've gone up? What goes down must go up. That's true, Matthew. So a lot. Dorothy said a lot. So I, I read that somewhere. Foreclosures are, are starting to go up. Actually, I would say they're probably starting to go through the roof, and that's going to be more and more and more. So Sharon asked, what does B's and C's mean? So it's quite simple. So think of it as like a, a nice car or a junker, right? So everybody wants a nice car, but not everybody can afford the nice car. They're nice to look at. You go into the Porsche dealer, you run your fingers down it. They yell at you for that. You open it up, you know, and you're just like, boy, someday I'm going to have one of these. So that's an A, okay? A B is like that, that main, that middle, middle of the road car. It's a great car. It's going to get you from point A to point B. It drives nice. It looks nice. Okay. And then C's, well, you guys can all guess what a C is. It's the one that you open the door like, woo wee. All right. I don't want this one. That's a C, but the C's cost a lot less than the B's and the B's cost a lot less than the A's. Does that make sense, Sharon? So B's and C's are gonna be really popular. Now, why C's? Because a C, you're gonna be able to buy at a good price. You're gonna be able to renovate the units and improve the equity of the property, improve the rent roll of the property. So you're instantly gonna build equity and you're gonna have cash flow. B's, you're just going to basically be able to take it over, do very minimal work, and then have cash flow. A's, well, those are going to go up for sale because they're not going to be able to be supported. I have a lot of concerns for these really high-end Airbnbs. I'm not going to lie. I think all of you that are looking for those nice Airbnbs, I think just give it some time and you're going to get those at a discount. So that's why I took you on that journey, folks. I wanted you to understand, and you all solidified, that you wanted to go back to 2009. But we can't do that. It's just, a, I should, I could, I would. But now here we are, and what's coming might be very similar to 2008. Maybe not as severe of a drop in real estate prices, but maybe, but it's still going to be a heck of a buying opportunity. Now, a lot of you, instead of real estate, were thinking, oh, I wish I could have went back to 2009. I would have bought this stock and that stock. I would have put more money in my 401k to let those mutual funds go up because everything was on sale. Folks, Everything's about to go on sale. Some of you think things are on sale right now, but I would say it's a trap. If you buy stocks right now, unless you really know what you're doing, I think you're still buying high because I know where we're going because I know how to read charts. So given all of that info that I just gave you, which is just a whole bunch of painting a picture, all I want to do tonight, all what me and Stephen want to do is just give you a couple tips on how you can get yourself ready for buying a whole bunch of that stuff when it all goes on, severe sale, okay? So it's very simple. So the first thing, Stephen, why don't we start with the place where the most amount of money is? I, I always like to start with the place that most all of you on here have. So real quick, and, and this is just all of you answer this as quick as you can. How many of you have a 401k, a 403b, a qualified retirement plan, an IRA, or something that is a qualified retirement plan? Just put I in the chat. So the reason I always start with these, it's kind of like cheating for us because we know that there's roughly about 42 to 44, is it billion or trillion, Stephen? I don't remember. Trillion in 401ks? Trillions. Trillion. Yeah. 44 trillion. So Billions. it's kind Billions. of like, Wait. you can just- Neither of those numbers sound right. What's that? <laughs> it's all good. It's a big number. It's a big number. So we, you can just put a blindfold and I can throw it and I'm going to hit somebody that's got one of those things. So as you all know, your 401k from your prior employer, your IRA that you have, you can't go out and buy that duplex, right? Can you go out and buy raw gold when it goes down in price? No. You could just buy the mutual funds that they offer you, or maybe now they've got some ETFs in there. But what if you could buy real estate with your qualified retirement funds? What if you could lend money to some of these folks on here that are experienced real estate investors, and you could make 12, 15% on your money, be in a first secured position and not have to do any of the work, deal with any contractors, deal with building inspectors and or deal with the tenants. Let somebody else do all the hard work. You're just the bank. But you're probably like, ah, that, that you can't do that. 
But the cool part is, is there we go, $32.3 trillion. Well, look, which look, is how down. Much, look how much Actually, was lost just in three months though. Th this is interesting, folks. Like $32.3 trillion as of September 30th, 2022, down 4.5% from June 30 of 2022. So, what you know, talking about qualified funds here, you know, what's important and what we're doing here tonight and tomorrow leading into this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with the Money School Essentials three-day training is it's all about controlling your wealth, controlling your money and being prepared for what's coming. So we like to strategically look at, okay, where is your money now? And, uh, you know, and then how can we be very smart with what we're doing with that money? So, you know, starting with where most money is makes a lot of sense. So we just wanted to kind of start introducing some of these various concepts and then we'll be able to spend all day Friday, digging really deep into this stuff and then presenting different opportunities, ways to implement and take action Saturday and Sunday this coming weekend. So just kind of give you an idea of what we're doing right now, but go ahead, Chris, we can see you again. I remember not long ago, maybe even a year ago, Stephen and I did these trainings many, many times. And I know for a fact, the number in qualified retirement plans was 44 trillion. So as of 2022, we're, we were at 32 trillion. And today we're even less than that. And it's not because less people are saving money, maybe a little bit, but it's because they've lost that much value because the stock markets went down that much. And here's the thing, like, and I'll battle any financial advisor. I know investing for the long haul is the thing that makes the most sense, right? But when you really put yourself in that predicament where you're investing for the long haul, you have to understand you're going to ride market cycles. You're going to ride these cycles. So everything's great when you're up here, right? You've all been up to the very top, okay? Everything feels awesome when you're there. But then when it starts going down and we actually start losing money represented by the red here, okay? When you start losing money, it doesn't feel as good as it did when you were going up. This, this period over here was happy. This period over here is sad. And about right here, and, and folks, this is a little bit less than where we're at. When you're at about 20%, most investors, they don't panic too much. They don't like it. They get their statement. They call their advisor. Their advisor says, ah, oh, it's just a paper loss. It'll be fine. You know, we can reallocate some stuff. Everything's good. And the reason for that is 20% loss only means you need to make 25% back. So you really only have to make 5% more than what you lost to get back where you were. But you see, this number starts to decline. As we lose 30%, and folks, we're, if you got any tech in your portfolio, you're here. If you lose 30, you got to make 43, or, or be, actually, I think it's 46. Sorry, I have a sheet on this. It's called the drawdown effect. You got to make 46% just to get back to 30 you lost. And this number keeps slipping 40 and 50. And at 50% loss, you have to make 100%. At 40% loss, you have to make 63% back. Now, some of you have seen me do this. It's called the drawdown effect. Okay. So this is called the drawdown. And, and here's the reason why this happens. When you lose 20%, just like that number Stephen put up there, you have less money invested in the market, which means that lower amount of money has to work a little bit harder. Right here, 5% harder. Right here, 16% harder. Right here, 23% harder. And right here, 50% you know, 50 or 100% more just to get back to 50. It's because every time you lose your money, is there's less of it. So the compounding effects don't work quite as well. So even though the buy, hold, buy and hold strategy, oh, we're just going to buy and hold, we're just going to ride this thing out, in theory works. Ask anyone that rode through 2008, how long did it take for them to get back what they lost? I will tell you, it was about eight to nine years for most of those folks because of this, because they did the long haul. They, they rode it out. Now, for me, I'm just a logical thinker, and I just do things with math. So let me just ask you all a question. If we're here right now, about 20 to 30%, this is, this is, this is now, okay? So I'm just going to mark this with a big X. That's now. If you're between 20 and 30, if right now you moved your money out of the market, or a smart thing to do would not be move out of the market, but just, just to move where the money goes, I would move it into a self-directed. If you got an IRA or an old 401k, Move it into a self-directed IRA or move it into a, what they call a solo case. Somebody on here had a solo K. And the reason to do that is it puts you in 100% control of the decisions you make with your money. 
No more of this. You can only invest in Fidelity's 20 mutual funds they give you. No more of this prudential where you've got freedom date funds and then just a couple other dog crap funds in your 401k. No, no, no. The universe is yours. You can lend that money out. Okay, you can buy real estate with it. You can invest in real estate. You can invest in businesses. You can do almost anything. Okay, there's there's some restrictions. You can't buy NFTs. Stephen's going to pull it up right here. So by doing that, by moving the money out of the market now, yes, you are locking in that loss, and that's what your advisor would tell you. Oh, now that loss is real. You really lost that money. But but now, and this is interesting too. Check this slide out here. Only four percent of IRAs. Okay. In, in the, the whole country, I think this is a countrywide, are self-directed. There's 80 million IRAs in this country, and only 4% of them are self-directed. So I'm sure all of you would look at that stat and you would say, well, there's got to be a reason. Well, it's, well, you're probably thinking, well, it's because of those self-directed IRAs. Well, they're no good. That's why nobody buys them. Wrong. They're phenomenal. I mean, look at any of the multimillionaires and billionaires, and Stephen can give you a bunch. We've got a whole slew of them that have, would say just the opposite. The reason why there's only 4% is because advisors don't sell them and most likely can't sell them because they could be called selling away. And do you know why? Because they can't earn a commission. They can't charge a fee for managing the self-directed IRA because the, being a self-directed IRA, you are in control, not the advisor, not the financial company, you, which means you can create wealth multiple ways. Stephen, you want to hit this a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it just opens up all your options. I mean, this is just some different things that we do that we're going to be talking about this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're going to get into real estate. Uh, we're going to talk about DAG, gold and silver, precious metals, investing in businesses and what that looks like. Is Spencer coming on this weekend? I don't know. I'd have to look at the calendar. Uh, here, I'll check it out while you're talking. So so possibly we'll, we'll be talking about uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but this is just all stuff that opens up your options for your qualified funds. So you're not, like Chris said, you're not stuck with, you know, those index funds and mutual funds and the stock market, you know, everything that that involves with that, it just allows you to really have the freedom to invest in uh, what you know. And, and, you know, we work with a lot of real estate investors. We work with a lot of business owners, and this is a great, great solution for them for sure. Yeah. So th that's just one option, right, folks? It, it's not an option for everybody. If you currently are working for a company and they have a 401k, this isn't going to work because they're not going to let you move the money outside of the company and still contribute. But for anybody that's got an old 401k, anybody that's got an IRA and you're sick of seeing the money go down and you're worried that maybe we could go 40 or 50. And, and, and I would say there's no maybe about it. That's where you're going. You don't have to believe me. You can just wait it out and say, oh, I should have, I could have, I would have. That one time that Chris and Steven guy said I should have got out around 20 or 30 because you know between there, it doesn't take as much work. And, and if you moved it into the self-directed options, self-directed IRAs, it's still an IRA by IRS code. Nothing changes. Okay, there's no, there, it's not like you're going to pay taxes for moving the money. It's a direct rollover. Okay, all you're doing is moving it into a custodian that allows you to invest in anything. Okay, it's just a different type of custodian. And please don't fall into the trap of believing Fidelity is really good at marketing. Okay, would all of you agree you've seen Fidelity's marketing? Well, they also say that they have a self-directed IRA. We hear it all the time. Fidelity does not have a true self-directed IRA. They're just using the buzzword self-directed because they know some people are asking the question and saying, oh, well, I was told I should get into one of those self-directed. Fidelity says, oh, we got one of those. You know what their self-directed IRA is? They allow you to self-direct your money into any of the investments that Fidelity tells you you can invest in. All Wall Street stuff. But if you went to Fidelity and you said, hey, Fidelity, just by chance, that self-directed IRA thing that you guys said, can I buy a dairy cow with that? Can I literally like take the money from my IRA, buy the cow, walk the cow in my, to my garage, milk it, take the milk out every day, sell the milk, and then take the money from the sale of the milk and mail it back to you guys? Are you guys okay with that? If I buy a cow with my self-directed IRA, they would laugh at you. They would tell you, oh my God, that's so ridiculous. Now it is ridiculous. But if it was truly a self-directed IRA, you literally could have done that. But you can't in theirs because they don't allow that. And they also don't allow you to buy real estate. They don't allow you to lend money. They, they would actually make you feel stupid for even asking those things. So truly, it's not a self-directed IRA. But if you moved it into a self-directed IRA and you lost 20%, 
Okay, and you went to Private Money Club. I saw a comment. Somebody said, well, I don't know how to draw up the contracts. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do, to do that for private lending. Easy. We know how to do all that. Not only do we know how, we know exactly where you should be, and it's called Private Money Club. And then we've got a, a four-week accelerator program where we would teach you everything you need, give you everything you need. All the resources are right there in front of you. It's, it doesn't take much to really get into that world. Sure, it's different than just calling your advisor and say, hey, uh, yeah, can you sell that Fidelity Magellan fund and buy the Fidelity stable value? No, it's different than that. You, you probably don't even know what those words meant anyway. So this is just one option. But if you ride this roller coaster down, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you get anywhere down here, this is what's called a no opportunity zone for you because you've already lost the money. You've already lost it. So where's the opportunity? Well, your only opportunity when you've lost it is just to wait it out and ride this long ride back up. And this long ride, it will be anywhere between seven to 10 years. It's just mathematics, folks. If you ride it down and we do happen to get down 40 or 50% on the market, which I'll tell you right now, we're gonna be definitely going another 40% from where we're at today. That's how long it's going to take you just to get back to where you are. Unless you get really lucky or find a really good investment. You'd be better off taking a, a little step out of the market now and be like, ah, oh, that's a little, it's a little flesh wound. Okay, 20%, a little flesh wound. Take that money and send it to work, making 12 to 15. Find some people on here doing real estate deals. You bring the money, they bring the expertise. Heck, you can make 20 to 40% doing stuff like that. I mean, there's hedge funds out there you can get into that average about 30%. I mean, there's all sorts of ways to make money that are non-correlated with the stock market. So anyway, that's just my little drawing here. Now, that's just one option. Some really We're all right. We, we are, before you get into the next part, we are getting a lot of questions like, okay, well, once I control the money, you know, I have to self-direct it. Like, where do I find what to do with it? Like, where do I invest it? So maybe you want to hit them, you know, show them kind of private yeah. money club as an option. Yeah. And then this so week, we're how about I just show you that? Options. Let me just show you something. So two years, a little over two years ago now, I created something which mimics a dating site, okay? And the reason I created this is because I just, I had the same problem. I wanted to move my money. I wanted my money to go to work for me and I didn't want to invest in traditional investments. So this is just like a dating site, okay? But it's a dating site for money. There's two types of people in here, okay? If I come over here, there's people that have money, and there's people that need money. We'll call them lenders and borrowers. So let's just say I'm a real estate investor and I need some money, maybe 250,000. Okay, I can pull this up and I can look, oh, here, here's Paul. So they're new. So Paul Garcia is looking to lend money. Sweet. Well, let me just check Paul out here real quick. I've never actually looked at Paul's profile. So here we go. Paul's looking to lend about 250,000 bucks. He's looking to lend. All right, cool. So there we go. Let's get back to Paul. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of take a sidestep out and I'm going to go back in here because I want to look at a couple other people. But Paul's a good, good person for me to get to know. So let's see, go back to that. So I want to connect with Paul. So boom, I connected with Paul. Now, once Paul accepts me, I can start communicating with Paul. We can start talking about deals. Okay, I don't know who this is. Look, at there's a whole bunch of new folks here looking to borrow and lend. So these people are looking to borrow and lend, but I can kind of just keep going and I can just look for all the people. Now, typically, I only look at people that have photos. All these other people, I'm sure they're great folks, but I only want to connect with people that have a photo on there. And I can do the same thing. Maybe I'm somebody that has some money in my self-directed IRA. And what I want to do is I want to go in and I maybe I got 50 to 100 grand in my self-directed IRA. And I want to meet some other borrowers who might be looking for money. I could go in here and I could make friends with these people. But you know what? There's a better way to do that. See, what I would do is I would just come in here and I would go, let me look at some deals. I want to see some deals. And I'd come down here. Look at this. I haven't seen this one yet, but 25% return on investment for six months. Short-term gap funding. Well, that looks pretty freaking. How many of you want to make 25%? Anyone okay with that? All right. So this is a four family building undergoing an amazing renovation once updated blah 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 market they're going to put it on the market and resell it so i can go in i can look at the financials i can look at the property he's got a, a nice little attachment here which is a breakdown of the deal so i can go in and i can really kind of get into the weeds on this deal and what they're looking to do purchase price 165 closing cost rehab budget total project cost three hundred and eleven thousand. But the cool part about that is he is only looking to raise 75,000. You know what I like about that? That means 
that this investor has some of their own money in the deal. So if I was interested in this deal and I had some money in a self-directed IRA that was just, yeah, you know, I was chomping at the bit and I might want to go in, I would come in here and I'd say, I'm interested. And you can say, I'm interested in more details. I want to see the loan proposal. Is it still available? And you can type in any message you want. I mean, I don't know how much easier it gets than that. You are now connected with somebody that literally out in the open has said, I am willing to pay you 25% on your money. Here's another guy. I like this one. 15% interest secured by a first position. Now that's what I look for. When I lend my money, I'm always looking for something in first position. That's what makes me feel good. That's what I like. I like, you know, I tell Ricky, Ricky Bobby and Talladega Knights. His daddy told him something really important that day in that school when he was drunk trying to teach his kids in, in the class something. He said, son, if you're not first, you're last. Now, later in the movie, you know, Ricky, Ricky's dad walking down the street said, son, I never said that. There's second place and third place. And anyway, what I'm getting at is there's not just one position you can be in, but I like to be first. So I like looking at deals that are first position. So if I wanted to look at this deal, I can just come in here and I can look at it. I can get all the different things. Let's see, he's got an appraisal. He's got a rental PDF and he's got, yeah, look at, he's got an appraisal report. So he's looking to raise 85,000. The first thing I wanna know, I like this. I wanna know what is this thing? So any of the real estate investors, you know what I'm talking about. He's got an appraisal in here stating that this property, let's see, where is the small print here? Should be right around here. So even if you see it, my eyes are bad, folks. So I got, I need to get a glass. Here we go. By sales comparison, 156. Yeah, so about 156 to 161,000 is what this property's worth. And he's looking to raise 85. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm okay earning 15% on my money in my self-directed IRA. I like being in a first position and it's 85 grand he's looking to raise. And I already know the property's worth well over 85. And not only that, even if the property loses value, I'm still in a pretty good protected way. So for anyone looking for somewhere to move their money, their self-directed IRA money, here it is, folks. And then there's going to be the people that say, oh, yeah, but I don't know how to do that. Great. Learn. Right over here, there's a learn section. Everything you could possibly need to know is going to be in here. And if you would like having your hand held, well, we've got that too. We've got the coaching programs that will walk you right through everything. You got the blog section, which is probably my favorite. It's all the other members in here talking about deals they've done, Colleen and Benjamin. And there's a ton of people on here. Sean is out there doing these interviews every day. These are all users that have used it. And guess what? All of these people in this blog section started right where you did. They didn't know a darn thing about being the bank and lending money. They knew what you know. I got a 401k and I don't like losing money. So what options do I have? And they started to learn. You know, we'll get, we'll get deeper into that this weekend. But I mean, right there, I mean, you don't need to go very far. We've already created the solution to the problem you didn't know you had until right now. All right, Steve, what other questions we got? I'm doing, keeping up with them in the chat box so far. We're okay, good. perfect. All right, so... So that's the self-directed IRA option, right? So you could take your old 401k, your old IRA, or your old whatever. I'm just going to write 403b, 457. They're all different plans. And you could just roll them all into a self-directed IRA. It's called a qualified rollover, okay? We'll just put qualified rollover. And if you do a qualified roller over to a self-directed IRA, there's no cost. Like, your 401k shouldn't charge anything. The IRA shouldn't charge anything. These people shouldn't charge anything. So depending on the custodian you use for the self-directed IRA, sometimes they have a small setup fee of 350 bucks or you know, it ranges depending on how much money you have, but it doesn't matter. Like now the money's here. Now you can go on to private money club and you can start lending money. You can go and you can buy physical gold, okay? Unlike your IRA or 401k, you definitely can't buy precious metals. You could go in and you could actually, uh, I don't know, you could physically buy, this would be lending, but you could physically buy real estate. Heck, you could buy multifamily. You could invest in syndications and all that good stuff. It doesn't matter because this puts you in control of your money. All of these are just opportunities. And you know what? Remember what I showed you earlier? This is where we're going, folks. So this down here is the opportunity you want, the opportunity to lend money, Okay, the opportunity to buy real estate at a lower price. Heck, let's actually talk about stocks. Okay, if you got a self-directed IRA, 
an opportunity would to be about, you know, you could buy stocks with your self-directed IRA when they go down in price, because this is where you want to buy. Normally that's red. I, I do it in green because that's opportunities that you want to take advantage of. So let's move on to one other thing. You know, this is my favorite thing. <clears throat> We're going to talk about a place. We'll just see, put BYOB. It stands for be your own banker. And this is something I didn't know about as an advisor. I had heard about it, but you know, that we were always told just to ignore it as advisors. And when me and my wife got into real estate, we started flipping a lot of houses, which we ended up getting a TV show on HGTV. I remember sitting at Cheesecake Factory in Salt Lake City. And I was sitting with a big investor. He had a TV show on A&E. I can't give you his name, but his name, his first name's Mike. So Mike, when I got me and my wife got in, he took a liking to us. We met him at a mastermind that we went to. And he started lending us money because he had lots and lots of money. So I'm at the Cheesecake Factory right downtown Salt Lake City. And me and Mike are talking about a deal that I was going to borrow some money from him. And I just asked Mike, you know, I was, a, I was an advisor of 14 years at this point. I just said to him, I said, so Mike, you know, how do you lend all this money? Like, how do you do it? Thinking he was going to say, you know, self-directed IRAs because I had learned about those. And you know what he says? He says, Chris, I lend money from my own bank. <laughs> thought to myself, I'm like, wait a second, Mike, you got a bank, dude? I mean, I, I knew he had money, but I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I didn't know he had that much money. His family must own a freaking bank. And I questioned him. I said, so, you know, how come we didn't go to your bank? And he says, well, I don't, I don't own a physical bank. I just, I, I created a banking system. And I said, you created, a, I'm, I'm lost. Like I'm the advisor thinking I know everything. And he's telling me about this banking system. And I'm like, what is it? And you know what he tells me next? He says, well, <clears throat> it's especially designed and engineered. So all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, that sounds good. Any of you engineers on here, I'm sure you're like specially designed and engineered. That's up my alley. And then he dropped the bomb. He said, it's especially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy. Now, the second those three words came out of his mouth, the first thing me, I, at that time, thought to myself is, oh, crap. Who got a hold of you, Mike? Like that, there's no way. Because at this point, he had explained to me that his banking system, he put his money into it, okay? So he would change where his savings went. So it basically changed one thing, and that's just where his savings went first. He put it into this specially designed whole life insurance policy. And then he would immediately in the next 30 days or whenever needed, take that money out and lend it to me and Larissa. So we'll just write Chris and Larissa to our company, which was called LC Strategic Realty. And he would lend that money to us so that we could go do all that hard work of renovating those houses. And he would charge us at that time, it was two points, okay? Just so you know, that's 2% and 12%. And this is in 2014, the rates have gone up since then. So here's the problem as an advisor that I saw on this. First thing, there ain't no darn whole life sold in the industry that you can put money in and take that money out immediately in the first 30 days. Ain't no way, ain't no how is what I said to him. And he says, well, if it can't work that way, then how do I do it? So right off, right out of the hole, I was intrigued and curious because what he described his whole life insurance policy doing is something that I never, and I had sold whole life and I knew a lot about it, something I had never in all 14 years of an advisor seen happen. Never. Every whole life that I'd ever seen, no matter how it was designed when I worked for that company, you'd put money in and the soonest you'd have any cash value on a really good day would be the second year, which means you'd have to wait two years to be able to take any money out. And how much would you be able to take out? Next to nothing. Where this guy was, to, and because I asked him, I said, so if you put a hundred grand in this, this specially designed whole life, how much can you take out? His answer, 60 to 90%, depending on the design. And his policies mostly were between 60 and 90% immediately in the first 30 days. That's what he told me. Now that made no sense. So I said, Mike, tell me how this works. And you know what he did? He said, I can't. He said, this guy Brent helped me set it up. I said, well, damn it, Mike, give me Brent's number and I'll call him and he can tell me how to do this because I've never heard of anything. So now I'm excited, but I'm still like many of you, I'm still Ah, a little leery. I'm like, ah, ain't no way. It sounds too good to be true. So I get a hold of Brent, and Brent tells me this one simple thing. He says, Have you watched the video? And I said, What video, Brent? And he said, The 90 minute video that teaches you all about the infinite banking concept. And I said, 
Uh, no, I, I, I'm an advisor. I don't need the video. I, I know. Just tell me how to do this. He made me watch the video. And I remember that Sunday going down in my basement with a big cup of coffee, sitting there watching that video. And I swear 90 minutes went by like 15 minutes or less, four pages of note. And I had now seen the path. So that was how I learned about this. You are all maybe learning about this now for the first time. Maybe you've been around our campfire. But let me just show you how this works real quick. because. If this doesn't make sense to you, then either I'm doing a terrible job or maybe you're not paying attention because there really should never be a time this isn't gonna make sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a circle. Over here on the left side of the circle represents that stupid, specially designed and engineered whole life. So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna change one thing. And that is where my money, my savings specifically, not all your income, but your savings goes. Because to buy real estate, right? Because many of you are real estate, to buy stocks, okay? To do all these investments, to lend money on PMC like we just looked, okay? All of these take money. So we gotta have our money somewhere. So where do you, where, where do you all warehouse your money? Chances are it's a bank account or a savings account. And if you're buying real estate, I bet you any money, that's where all your money sits, a bank account. Who wins in a bank? The bank, you don't. Any of you getting more than 1% uh, in your bank account? Some of you might be getting three because rates have gone up, but they won't stay there, trust me. But think about it, right? The bank pays you three and they charge you what? Six to 8%, some people were saying for that those mortgages today. So they give you 3% and that's a really good day. And they charge you double or more. The bank's winning. So all we want to do is we want to be the bank. And to do that, we just got to change where the money goes. So over here in this specially designed whole life, the first thing I know, I'm going to have a guaranteed interest rate. And that interest rate for, I'll just use one of the companies is 3.25%. Okay, that's one of our favorite companies. Plus, all the insurance companies we use have been around for hundreds of years, and they pay dividends every year, not just some years, every year since they've been around. Okay, And those dividends bring this anywhere between 5 and 6%. So you got 3.25 lock, stock, and barrel guaranteed. Your bank isn't guaranteeing you 3 to 6%. They're just paying that to you now. This is contractually guaranteed. And then when they add the dividend, and I'm just going to use a number here. Let's just say when they add a dividend, that's going to take it up to 5.2%. There ain't any banks paying 5.2% right now, folks. There's not even banks guaranteeing you 3.25. So I've already found a better place to hold my money. Not only that, because it is a life insurance policy, my money gets to grow tax-free. And because Mike and Brent showed me this awesome thing, I know that whatever money I put in here, I have immediate access to that in the next 30 days. So let's just say I got 100 grand sitting in the bank account. So I move 100 grand in here. Okay, so right out of the hole, I put 100 grand in and I want to save $30,000 a year. Okay, remember, we're going to change where our savings go. So I had 100 grand in the savings and then I'm going to put 30 grand a year in. So right out of the hole, I go on and I see that $85,000 deal on PMC. What was that one? That was 15%, right? Yep, 15%. Steven, can you do the math? What is 15% on $85,000? And give me the monthly. 12,750 divided by 12, 1,062. $1,062, okay? So I take and put 100 grand in here. And then I immediately in the next 30 days when that deal is ready to close, I take 85,000 out. Now, when I take it out, I'm going to take a loan. So I'm going to take a loan from the insurance company. Now, the reason I'm going to take a loan is because I know something. If I take a loan, I know that the insurance company is going to lend me my death benefit. So let's say this policy had a $600,000 death benefit. I don't plan on dying today, but with all the things in the news, like I'd like to protect my family in case I do die. So the $600,000 death benefit is really important to my daughter and also to my wife and my family. So I like that death benefit, but you know what? Sure would be nice to use a portion of that while I'm living. Yeah, okay. Well, the insurance company that I put a hundred grand into is going to allow me to take this 85,000 I need for that PMC deal. So I take the 85,000 and I lend it out over here and the insurance company is going to charge me interest. Let's just say it's between 4 and 5%. Depending on the insurance company, this number floats. So right out of the hole, if I'm making 5.2 and I'm paying 5, I'm making a 20 basis point spread. Now, that's nothing to write home about, but it's still better than what the bank does. And the reason I'm making a spread is because my 100 grand is still in that account. 
still earning a guaranteed interest rate plus dividends. Because the insurance company didn't give me my 100 grand. They gave me 85,000 from my death benefit. So now my death benefit drops by 85,000. They lend this 85 grand to me in a loan that essentially if I never paid the loan back, they, they wouldn't get mad because they just pay me less when I die or pay my family less. But now I got $1,062 a month coming in at a 15% interest rate. Now, if we just wanted to play the spread here, what's 15 minus five? That's 10%. I am making a 10% spread here. Plus, I'm still making the interest in the dividends. So what I now I'm going to do is, am, am I going to take this 1,062 bucks and put it back into their bank? No. You see, now I've already found a better place to hold that money. So I'm going to take this 1,062 and I'm just going to send this money back to my policy, which is my bank. In this whole thing right here, you control 100% of the flow of money. You controlled where it went. You were in full control of that money. It is private. It is guaranteed. It is tax-free. It has a death benefit to protect my family. I can take that money out because it's liquid and use it. But when I take it, I'm taking a loan against the death benefit. So therefore, my money never even leaves the account. That's called uninterrupted compound interest. But then I send it out here to work for me. And it now is earning me 1062 and a net spread. If I do the spread over here, the 5% loan interest rate minus the 15, I make a net spread of 10. And I put that 1062 over here, which now the second is deposited back in the policy, I could reuse it again and again and again. And the entire time I controlled the money and I earn a spread. And the best part is, is if you understand mathematics, the spread goes up every single year because next year, this 100,000 that I put in it that earned interest and dividends is now more than 100,000. So now I have more than 100,000 earning interest and dividends. And the next year, the same thing. It's called compounding. Albert Einstein said it was the most powerful thing in the universe. And he said, also, those that understand it, earn it. I earn it. Those that don't, pay it. That was me in the past life. And that's probably a lot of you. So when I learned this, and I learned how to make my money work for me, this changed everything for me. And it will change everything for all of you folks. So tonight we, we talked about the self-directed IRAs. And we also talked about this strategy, which is called the infinite banking concept. It's a process on different places where you can put your money and different ways you can be in control of your money. But this is going to get you ready for the recession because this is going to keep your money liquid to take advantage of all these opportunities. This weekend, I'm going to go really deep into this. I'm going to show you things that I don't think I've ever done trainings, maybe some YouTube videos, but I don't think I've ever done the training that I'm going to do Friday for the three-day virtual on how this works. And I'm actually, for the first time, I'm going to show the mathematics that we do behind the scenes. We never really show it on the front end because it's our mapping team, but I'm going to show them on the front end. I'm going to show you how the numbers actually look and how they work in real life scenarios with real designs that we've done. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the lie that you've been taught about investing for the long haul with the markets and about how the markets will always be the better choice. Because every advisor is going to say, oh, you'd be better off just putting the money in the stock market. I'm going to prove them wrong mathematically. And we're going to do that this weekend. It's going to be a ton of fun. So let me hit some questions here real quick. Because I, I always, when you give me a damn pen, I burn time. It's kind of what I thought. So we only hit what I would call the equivalent of the uh, pimple on the elephant's ass. It's about all I covered in an hour and it went quick. But imagine if I had three days with you and I had all the people that I do a lot of work with from tax professionals to people that set up entities to who else do we got coming? We got entity people. We got trust people coming. Um, we've got a whole calendar here of people. We've got- uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, so just, just to clarify, Chris, while you're pulling that up. we So what we do as a company is we- do infinite banking policies. So we do this all day, every day. We're professionals at it. We'll create you any style policy you want built for high cash value, access to money immediately within 30 days. We use the best companies, the best designs. We have the most experience. And we're the only company that offers ongoing support through our mapping implementation team, completely free of charge. We don't charge for any of it. So everyone always asks like, well, how do you guys make money? Well, we make money directly from the insurance company. It's a reduced commission to build policies and give you all the benefits of them. But we do a lot of business and we do a lot of uh, repeat business. So uh, that's one way. And then of course, um, you know, we do things like this weekend with the money school 
three-day training uh, essentials class, which we're talking about right now. But just so you guys know, like this is what we do. So if you want a banking policy, you need help with it, anything like that, that's why we're here. Self-directed IRAs. We don't own the trust company, the custodial company, but we have a great relationship with the owner of that company. And that's who we use. Almost all of our clients use. And just, it's all about support and service. They have great support, great service. So that's who we would recommend to you to help you set up a self-directed account. So, you know, once we control our money, this is what Chris is going to get into is once we control our money, how do we make more money? Where are those opportunities? How do you do it? How do you save money on taxes? The wealth killers, right? Taxes, inflation, volatility. How do we eliminate that stuff from our life? So that's why we need to spend three days with you because this last hour right now flew by, like we can barely get into the yeah. surface of this and we want to go deep with you. So go ahead, Chris. So Friday, this Friday, and also too, many of you are thinking, oh, I'm busy this week and I got to go to this game or I got to do that. No problem. We actually, a lot of people actually prefer watching the recordings because they're edited down and you can go to only the sections that you want to watch. So it's on demand. We send you all the recordings. We give you access to our file vault, which has a ton of tools in there for real estate investors and lending. But here's the agenda, day one, day two, day three. So it's Friday through Saturday. We start at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So early for Pacific, but you guys can do it. Come on, it's not that early. And then we end promptly at 3.30 on Friday. Saturday, we end at three o'clock. And Sunday, you all know Sunday's Super Bowl, right? So we will be finishing promptly by three o'clock Eastern because we all want to watch the Super Bowl. So this is what you do. You just click that and you register. The price for the three-day is $297, okay? These are some of the speakers that are going to be there. Spencer's a Bitcoin guy, Roger Comstock. I forgot we had him speaking. Matthew Sullivan, Kevin Shortell, a notes specialist. We got Mr. Chris Rude coming on to talk about a specific deal that he has that is going up on Private Money Club, but you're all going to have a first crack at it. Brent Carlson is an entity specialist in trust formation. So these are all the things you're getting. You're getting the recordings of the event, the file vault, which gives you cash flow deal inspector, max offer form, closing cost estimator, private lending packet, credibility builder. We also give you our comprehensive wealth builder kit, which I created. And then we give you one month free to our MSTV, which is a group coaching every single month for two hours. And then one-on-one -on -one cons consultation, uh, which will basically put you on the phone with one of our money mentors. We've done, we do one of these events a uh, little, about three times a year, maybe four times on a good year um, in each training, just so you know. So this three day that we're going to do this weekend is totally different than the three day we did last time. So a lot of people are like, oh, I already came to that. I don't need to come again. Really? This one will be totally different. So the last one was phenomenal, but this one will be a completely different topic. It'll be a completely different type of training. And like I said, Friday, I'm going to go deep into some of those infinite banking concept strategies and some numbers behind them that I've never trained on. I don't even have a YouTube video with that. So the recording copies of this particular training will be on my YouTube, but the three days recordings and edited recordings, which are all timestamped and earmarked, the only way to get them is to actually register for the three-day event. I will deliver one hell of a training and not just I, I will do Friday because that's my day, but over three days, the entire team and all the people that we work with from our trusted <laughs> network will deliver an unbelievable training. I, I always say I, but that's just because Friday's my day, so I get to have some fun. Sorry, I, was, I was talking to somebody earlier on the chat and they said they were working with their insurance agent and they had no idea about IBC. So they tried to tell them how to design it and they're they're helping them out. And I said, they said, well, it's the, the company is as important as the policy itself. You know, it has to be non-direct recognition or it should be, you know, the loan rate matters, the dividends, whether it's mutually owned or not. So that's all very important. I said, and if they're trying to sell you IULs run, and he wrote, they sure definitely enough. show me IUL. Shit. So I just said, <laughs> why. Anyway, you know why? Said, you IULs know. are the highest commission product in the insurance world. That's why all the brokers say they're so good. I have never, I, and I'm, I'm, I've seen hundreds of these things. I've never, ever in my career seen one IUL policy that actually performed as it was illustrated. Never seen one. And, and folks, I just want, I want to remind everybody, we just came off the longest bull run in history. So an IUL is supposed to do well in a bull run, like a good market environment. And I've never seen one that's performed like it was illustrated. So that you definitely don't want one of those. 
Yes, the three days recorded, not just recorded. We we literally have a full editing team edit the three day training. So we edit it so that if you just wanted to see the IBC section, right, it'll be edited in and you'll know exactly. You just click that timestamp and it'll take you right to that section. You want to watch Spencer talk about Bitcoin and, and crypto investing. You just click that section. So the editing is very expensive. I mean, we spent about a thousand bucks to edit just the three day recordings so that you don't have to watch three days worth of just raw content. It's edited and also put in timestamps. So you can just get where you want, get the information and then move on with your life and learn it and apply it. Breaking news, this just in. Are you sick of having your money lying around not doing anything? Well, we've got the solution for you. PrivateMoneyClub.com. Back to you, Chris. What's the lowest amount of money needed to start one of those specially designed whole lifes? It's easy. So I'm 45. You just add a zero to your age. So depending on how old you are, just take your age times 10. Okay. Or just add a zero. And that would be your minimum monthly. So if I'm 45, my minimum monthly to start the policy is 450. So unless you're over 60 or under 20, then you would just do 15 times your age. And that's, that's a monthly calculation. Uh, Andrew said, info I got a couple years ago was that the normal amount you could set up allows for 60% withdrawal immediately. But if I put in a chunk at first, I could get up to 90% immediately. How big of a chunk? So it really depends. Um, the way we design them, I mean, the most efficient way is like a, a 15 time rule. So for example, if you put in a hundred grand, you'd put in 15,000 a year. That's going to give you the maximum efficiency. You know, if you put in Ten thousand dollars, you know. Well, you probably will do fifty grand. You put in five hundred or six hundred a month, um, something like that would be very efficient. But most of the plans that we design. So, Andrew, what what you're talking about a few years ago, and this makes perfect sense. A few years ago, the designs that we use today didn't exist. I mean, they did, but nobody used them. Nobody knew how to do them. So we've been, you know, at this for a while, and we've been experimenting with the plan designs. And because we've been experimenting with the plan designs. We've found really effective ways to design these things. I'll just show you one here real quick. They give you the real high early cash value. So like here, this person puts in 100,000 and then 10,000 a year. And because he does that, he's got access to 103,661, which is 94% in this particular plan. And the second year he puts in 10,000 and has 10,691. So this is, this is a, a design we call the Slayer. We can do this for all of you. It, it works really well for real estate investing. We got one design. It's a proprietary design called the Rock. And it's, it's not this one. I'll, I haven't done the Rock yet, but the Rock is by far the best one. It's the most stable plan design. It's got the highest guarantee. It's, it's, it's better than this. But this is, this is one of the better ones for real estate, just so you can kind of see the numbers. But yeah, that wasn't available two, three years ago. We didn't even know about those. Oh, the nationwide index UL accumulator. Oh boy. That's an index to universal life right there. Uh, PMC, uh, PMC training similar to what you will be training on Friday. Um, not really. No, the Deborah, the, the, the accelerator, the PMC accelerator coaching, which we hasn't, haven't launched it yet. We'll be launching it this weekend for the first time ever is a uh, four week training and then four weeks of just communication back and forth with a dedicated coach that teaches lending and borrowing. So I'm going to be talking high level about lending and borrowing, but I'm going to be really getting into strategies where the, the accelerator course is really going to prepare you and teach you how to be the best borrower you could be if you need money or how to be the best lender you could be. And it's one-on-one -on -one coaching with somebody that is an absolute expert in this. His name's Noah. And you'll, you'll be hearing from him this weekend as well. So I think you'll love this weekend's training. Let's see. Why is there a limit of 25% of annual income to start or dump? I'm not sure I quite understand that. Um, a minimum of 25%. There's, there's really not. Why is there a limit of 25%? Oh, oh, oh. You're talking about like your, your income. The insurance, and it's actually a little bit more than that. Uh, that's probably... I can't remember what company was 25%. And Kelly, if you live in New York, that's a New York thing. So you can put more than that in. So really what insurance companies are trying to do is make sure that they don't over-insure you. So by allowing you to put more than 25% of your income in, a lot of times what that would do is 
um, just trigger some mech, you know, problems or maybe overinsure you based on your human life value. But I can tell you, you can get more than 25% in um, if you want. Is Northwestern Mutual a good company for this system? Northwestern Mutual is a great insurance company. I'll be the first to say that. But they are a great insurance company that absolutely does not work for the infinite banking concept because they don't like you taking loans. And, and just, just to kind of prove that, most Northwestern Mutual policies, whole life policies, charge you 8% on the loan interest. That's just, that's just not going to work. Now, there are ways to make Northwestern works, Northwestern policies work if you already have one through cash value lines of credit. But yeah, typically Northwestern, just no bueno on uh, the IBC. Okay, so Andrew, <clears throat> let me bring you back. And I got a great YouTube video. You wouldn't set up an IBC policy to put money in and then take it out to pay your mortgage payment, if that's what I'm gathering based on you said. Remember I said, what we're going to do is change one thing, and that's where your savings goes first, not where the money to buy the baby's diapers goes, not where the money to buy you know, weekly groceries or the money goes to pay your mortgage. Like It's just not efficient using it for that. What we want to use this for is we want to put money into the policy that we then can send out to work for you. Putting money you know, to your mortgage payment, that only person that money is working for is the bank and it ain't serving you. So that's one of the things we do not teach. Um, I, hopefully I answered that question, right? Any advice to get my spouse to get interested? Yeah, watch the 90 minute video on my, go to chrisnoggle.com. Uh, we deal with this a lot. Like, how do I get my spouse to do this? Well, you, here's what you don't do. Do not try to explain it to them yourself. What you should do, is you should have them watch the same video that I watched, the same video that so many others on here have watched. And that, that's at chrisnoggle.com. Love to ride motorcycles. What about National Life Group? Uh, National Life Group, If so there's National Life, there's two National Lifes. The main National Life is just gonna sell IULs. And Stephen, if you wanna share that again about IULs, I mean, there's so much material out there as to why you shouldn't do an IUL. The only reason you should ever do an IUL is if you've, if you're trying to create a supplemental retirement plan and you've got 20 years or longer to put money into the IUL and never touch it, that's the best use for it. That's what they're designed for is long-term uses. I would still argue that it's there's better ways to do it, but to each their own. Can the PMC site notify you if someone requests some money from you, contacts you for possible request? Oh, yeah. Well, PMC site's not going to notify you, the borrowers. Remember, it's borrowers and lenders on there. Uh, let me just remind you or show it to you again. It does too, though. It does email you that somebody messaged you. So you'll get an email. Oh, yeah. So here, I actually just got notified right here. So you can't see it because this is in the way and I'm sharing my screen, but somebody just notified that they accepted my friend request. There's messaging. So the messaging looks just like your phone. So if you want to message with people, this is a test that we did today. It just looks like that. So, you know, like, hello, let's go. Can we change the subject line? These are just different things. Here's a message I did with somebody. So it just looks like texting. So when you want to message somebody, you just come up here and you just you can message them. You can create a new message to anybody in the group. So like I could message this gentleman here, Jason Black, or I could just start typing in a, a person's name. Like, let's see if we can find Steven. So it's Steven. Let's see, does he come up? Oh, no, but you know, you can do that. You can enter their name, put the thing. So it's just like what you're used to with communication. And you can communicate with anybody in the platform as long as you're a premier member. If you're not a premier member, you're not going to be able to message anybody. So you could just go in, you can browse through people, figure out who you're looking for. You can search for people. Let's see what comes up, how many Andrews we have in here. So there you go. You can just search for Andrews if that's who you're looking for. There we go. Looking to borrow. Looks like a nice guy. Served our country. I'll friend him. You can go in and you can say, I just want to look at lenders that have 100 to 250. And you can just start messaging. Whoops. There's no Andrews that are lending 250,000. But you just go in, you can find, I always ignore people that don't have photos. Okay, I always go to people that do, looking to lend. Now that looks like a guy I want to get to know there. You know, he's a family man. So again, it, it, you just go in and you just play with it. There's so much that you can do. There's all sorts of tools over here. Um, we even have a software built into it, which we'll go through. Yeah, tons of stuff in there. Let's see. Uh, one thing somebody said, I've never done any investments, barely have a 401k as a newbie. Where do I start to make sense of this all? And it's actually a good question because it is a lot of stuff thrown at you all at once. I mean, you can you can read a thousand books on this. You can listen to it, listen to a hundred thousand podcasts. You can come on webinars all day, but like, where do you actually start moving forward and taking action? And quite honestly, it's one of the reasons we still do the three-day training. Like 
197 bucks or 297 in a skateboard or whatever. Like we put a lot of money into marketing for this and to put this on. So we don't really make money on this, but it's the place that we can drive people to that are new or want to just continue learning more. I mean, we have, we have so many, I guess, Colleen, Dexter, um, Tess, I just saw commenting like, I mean, how many of these have you guys been on? Four or five, six of them? I mean, so it's one of those places where not only can it get you a path moving forward to start implementing all this and bringing it together for you, but kind of just also keeps you in the loop on what's changing, what's happening. And that's why people come back every three to four months to attend again. And so it's kind of like our, it's become our foundational. I call it our flagship training, even though it's very simple, it's not advanced techniques. It's, it's still the flagship training because it's where the foundation is what brings it all together that allows you to start doing all this other stuff that we talk about on some of our other webinars and trainings and masterminds and stuff like that. But you got to start somewhere and you got to keep that momentum going. And that's why I love the three-day training and what it does. Yeah, it's a phenomenal training. Anybody that's on here that's been through it would probably say the same thing. <clears throat> Let's see, Michael. Hey, what's up, Michael? Can you send, can I, or can it send you a text to your phone to let you know uh, to communicate with the borrower. Not yet, but that's coming. So we're working on that right now. So like if somebody messages you on there, it, it notifies you on your phone. That is that is functionality that we're working on right now. Can't tell you when that's going to be in there, but everything with technology is a long process, just so you know. Um, let's see, what is a MEC? Stands for Modified Endowment Contract. So in other words, if that policy that I drew on the board, if we didn't build that properly and it mech all of the gains potentially would be taxed, but we don't design max. We design policies that are not max. Um, it's not something you really need to know about. It's something we need to know about when we design it. You're welcome. Let's see, can money be direct deposited into a policy from a paycheck? Not typically because you would need your employer to allow a, a payroll slot for it. So it's, it's, it's rare. I would say just get paid and then set up an automatic e e ACH into your policy. Uh, let's see. I don't check my email daily. Okay. Well, if that's the reason you're not going to get in private money club because you don't check your email daily, that's, that's a piss poor excuse. I'm not saying that is the reason, but you should check your email more often, but it's not email. You just log on it. And, and also too, I didn't really explain this. There is an app. So we created an app. I'll just show it to you for private money club. We'll go over this this weekend, but the app is just like Tinder. So you go on and like, there's a deal. I just swipe left through all the different deals. Okay, get it, there we go. And let's just say I like this one, flipping Summerlin 12% interest. I swipe right and there we go. And then I connect with the borrower. So it's not texting, but I'm communicating with this person right now if I wanna be. And you can go in, you can message everybody. You can go to the learn section, the blog section, my messages. So it's all on the phone. Uh, when will PMC lender certificates, certificates be available? Uh, July. So we were just talking about that today. We are working on it. We do have a demo of what the certifications are going to look like. Bad ass. So those are coming soon. Stuff is fascinating to me. Is there a place to go to become an agent or a practitioner of designing these? Well, yes, there is. Join us this weekend and we'll actually, I'll make sure Stephen tells you about that. We have a, a whole money mentor development program that we have created. So if you're interested in this and you want to be a practitioner and you want to be able to do this, well, you came to the right place. And there's two answers to that. There's the Infinite Banking Institute, which is the Nelson Nash Foundation, which is the go-to spot. I would highly, highly recommend you get involved with them. They'll teach you the intricacies of IBC, like, like every little thing that you'd ever want to know about building and designing and the and and all the little things. And, and that's fine and dandy. It's it's good to know. It's good to learn. Um, is it necessary? I don't know. I, to me, it's the team that's around you that's important. And what we've done with the money multiplier and with our you know money school is we've created a team that teaches you how to not only do infinite banking, but show it to other people the right way and promote it and share what it can do for other people's financial lives for them and their families. And that's what the coaching program is that Chris and I developed. So it kind of depends on what you want to do. But if you want to really be able to help people, our coaching, new agent coaching program is definitely the spot to be. But if you just want to learn about infinite banking, then the Nelson Nash Institute, um, I would recommend that anyways. 100%. Nelson Nash all day long. The certificate thing. So... <laughs> 
is a little bit more involved to unpack in the last couple of minutes here, but the certificate, so just like any other qualified profession, um, you know, there's a certification. So we've created the first certification program for private lenders or borrowers. And what it's going to be designed to do is imagine in Private Money Club, you've got a profile. You get certified. Your profile in Private Money Club here, I'll just, uh, it's just, I'm visual. So I just got to kind of show it. So your profile in Private Money Club would, you know, I'll just go here, find people. So let's just say somebody's looking for people here and you know, this person, Teresa, her profile would have a box around it. And then whatever certification she has would say on top, certified silver certified borrower. There's also badges that we're doing. So there's badges inside this box. If she's certified, that would say accredited investor, IBC, there's all sorts of badges we're creating. And really the whole idea is to allow the users of Private Money Club to differentiate themselves from all the rest. Because there's 3,800 or 3,900 members in Private Money Club. So, and you can kind of see they all just look the same. So the certification really will set you apart from everybody else, but it'll also give you one heck of an education on being a, a good borrower or a good lender or whatever certification program you go through. But the main reason would basically be to set your profile apart and let all the other members know I'm a certified borrower or I'm a certified lender. And if I'm a, a lender, I'm looking for certified borrowers. That's who I want to lend my money to because I know they've gotten educated. So that's kind of just a 30,000 foot view of what the certification program is going to be. Uh, what happens if you miss a payment? It depends, Ryan. If you miss a payment in the first year and, and you got to change the way you think about it, it's it's a, you're, you're making premium deposits. Think of them as deposits like your savings account, not payments. But you, if you miss a payment, you're cheating yourself first. You have the ability to reduce the amount you make. So let's just say you set up a policy for a thousand bucks a month. You're going to have the ability to reduce that depending on the design up to as much as about 80% less. So you could go down to about 200 a month minimum and then go back up to the thousand. So we can build that flexibility in, but you don't want to miss premium deposits, especially in the first year. It, um, it typically doesn't go well. And then uh, approximately how, how long would you say it takes to obtain some of these certifications? Not long. Um, like to become a, like, let's just say a silver certified borrower, if you really put your head down and you got it to it, I'd say it'd probably take you, I don't know, six hours maybe, you know, if you really paid attention. Now I know in the, the financial world, when I have to get a certification for things, I sometimes just click through, but you're not going to learn as much. I mean, you could probably get your certification done a lot faster, but if you really wanted to digest it, a few hours per certification is about what it would take to really, really get through it. And we're developing those out now. So the certification trainings are going to look and feel kind of like a YouTube video, a really fun YouTube video to watch. So it's not just a bunch of text on a wall that puts you to sleep. It's actually going to be very entertaining, constantly moving because, hey, I, I know how it works. Like we have an attention span less than a goldfish. So we need to capture your attention every six seconds, just like the movies. There's not a second in a movie that it doesn't change a view every six seconds. So our, our certifications are the same way. It's, it's always moving, it's entertaining, and it's fun to watch. I would need to have the life insurance in place before I tried to ride the skateboard. Good idea. <laughs> just put it on your wall. Not too bad. Glad it's not like a year or something. No, definitely not. Oh, gosh, no. Even the, the full on like accelerator coaching program, um, you know, that's a four week program. So none of our trainings take a whole lot, lot of time. I mean, like the three day training is probably one of our most, uh, you know, comprehensive and that's three days. Awesome folks. Well, Hey, thank you all for joining us. I know we went a little bit over here, so we will see all of you tomorrow, either for what the F happened at 9.30 a.m. Eastern or the wealth webinar at 1 p.m. Eastern, or join us for our happy hour, Ask Me Anything at 4.30. Until, <laughs> until then, folks, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them, but I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you want to know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button. Actually, smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.